Christopher, today at the International Congress of Abdominal Obesity, you have been uh, talking about uh, a diet, uh, the optimal diet, which is far, quite different from the low-fat diet and the uh, low-carbs diet. And considering that there is a, a new tendency to have a, a low glycemic load uh, diet, so what do you think about uh, the low fat and low carbs diet in this world? Well, I think I could design you two low fat diets that were equally low in fat, where one would be a pretty unhealthy diet and one would be a very nutritious and healthy diet. I could also do that with low carb. We have an ongoing study right now where I can take some of the examples of people assigned to the low carb and they are achieving low carb but in a very nutritionally inadequate way. So I think our simple concepts of low carb and low fat have not really been very effective. They're overly simplistic. In particular, if, if you look at both of those, I, you have just suggested this to me that the the focus on low fat has driven people to carbohydrates in a way that was probably unintended. The bulk of these carbohydrates are now refined grains. They're high glycemic index, high glycemic load. They're sugary beverage drinks. And so an important, a very substantial part of the diet is coming from poor carbohydrate quality sources, which tends to parallel glycemic index and glycemic load. So the optimal diet needs to take into account that low carb and low fat are too simplistic. You really need to focus on nutrient density and how, many, how much fiber, how many vitamins and minerals, uh, are you getting a lot of saturated fat from the beef sources. There were some interesting presentations today that the beef fat is different than the dairy fat. If you take that even further, the coconut fat is very saturated. That's different than beef fat and dairy fat. So even when we say saturated fat, we've oversimplified. But in general, the idea that is, is probably that we really need to move away from this low fat mantra. It could have even been right, except for the way it's been interpreted. The way it's been interpreted is people now eat a lot of bread and cereal that's refined and it's in packaged processed food. And those aren't the best quality carbohydrates. A high quality carbohydrate, is it still high carbohydrate or low carbohydrate or something in the middle? Ah, see, now that's tough. So it's hard to figure out if it's high or low carbohydrate. So the higher quality carbohydrates are vegetables and legumes. They're not even grains, which is really the bulk of most people's diet. When you start eating a lot of vegetables and a lot of legumes, they have so much water in them that they're satiating more quickly and you would end up with a higher carbohydrate quality, lower carbohydrate diet overall. It seems that these uh, recommendations comes also with high fiber. Is and it, it would be. So you'd end up really with, you'd be eating water and eating fiber if you follow this. And what about protein? And protein, ah, protein is very interesting in the mix here. So it does seem that protein is satiating. But there's so many different protein sources. So one of the papers that I cited today uh, came from Frank Hu, which I really like. Uh, he did a nurse's health study, observational analysis of the nurses who were on the lowest carbohydrate diet, which meant they were on high protein diets. And when those high proteins came from animal foods, uh, it was very different than when they were from plant foods. So a plant-based high protein, uh, plant-based high fat, high protein, low carb diet is qualitatively different than just protein. So again, yes, high protein is satiating, but doesn't that oversimplify the quality of the protein sources? Is there um, an optimal protein uh, percentage of the diet? No, in fact, so I would never suggest there's an optimal percentage. Really what's more likely is that there's a heterogeneity. People are different. Some people respond differently to high-carb, low-fat, low-carb, high-fat, high-protein. So the other mistake that we've made over the years is to assume that there's one optimal diet. An unrestricted? An unrestricted? Diet? An unrestricted diet. Well, there's guidelines that everyone should follow. And I think eventually, I think what we'll learn is that there are ways to tailor the diets and find out if you could determine what diet you would be best on 
I don't think it's the blood type diet, which came out a long time ago. The one in particular that I'm very interested in is insulin resistance, which in this meeting has been a, a very important concept related to abdominal obesity, high triglycerides, the metabolic syndrome. It really looks like more than those without that pattern, the people with metabolic syndrome, insulin resistance, differentially do better on low carb than the folks who are insulin sensitive. So we need to do more of that, of teasing apart who does better on one so that there will be multiple optimal diets.